Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, I finally got it, my Sugar 65. I uh, actually bought this before the 1111 sale and I thought, I was like, ah, I probably should have waited, but I have not seen it cheaper. I got this for $49 and right now the cheapest I can find it is 60. Um, in fact, I had many things in my cart that I was expecting to buy for 11 11 and i didn't buy a thing because they all went up in price they marked them down but they were still higher than when i had them so this is not the best 11 11 sale that i've seen on aliexpress i gotta say but thankfully i didn't have to say oh i could have gotten it cheaper i i think i got a pretty good price on it so it does look like it got a bit of uh damage because it was just this box inside of the bag but Fingers crossed, we're not going to have any damage on the inside. So this is the Sugar 65. It's a 65% um, um, CNC aluminum 6063, and it's made by Waycav. WK is the same company that made the WK 870s from Keep Monkey. So this appears to be, I mean, a lot of people have been getting it. They've been very happy with it. So today we're going to take a look at it and see what the Sugar 65 is all about. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, before we dive into the keyboard, let's see what we've got in the box. Here in a single box, an accessory box. We've got standard wire switch and keycap pointer. We've got a USB-A to USB-C cable. It's rubberized and has a velcro strap and then we have a allen wrench and here's the sugar 65 now i did get it in i thought it was a white but it looks kind of like a silver but it could be a white i think the silver knob is throwing it off we do have a um, dust cover which is always nice and we do have this wrapped in a plastic let's take a look here this is just a RGB controls, multimedia functions, 66 key layout with a knob. So a lot of people have said this is basically like the um, the aluminum version of the GMK67, though I think that's the LMK67, though that one has like a different colors, inner edge and outer edge. That one has, I have red issues about that one, so I didn't, I haven't even looked into picking it up. Plus it's a lot pricier than this one was like i said this one i was able to get with 49 for 49 dollars before um there was no shipping but before taxes so it looks like we are wrapped in a heat shrink wrap oh, i kind of like that but there doesn't look to be any damage from the um holes we saw in the box so let's go ahead and open this up now there does seem to be two switches one in each corner and I don't know if that's there to hold as an anchor because I don't see any screw holes. It could be, yeah, I think the plate's being held on there by the switches. So we have a south facing board. We do have um, plate mounted stabilizers, but if we take these out. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I was trying to see if there's abil availability for screw-in stabilizers, but I can't quite see. We have a very standard knob there. We have some padding so that we're not going to get that loud um, echo from the space bar. I'll just keep this in there for right now. That's another thing I didn't see. We do come with plate mounted stabilizers and they are just lubed on the wire. I oh, know there's a little bit of lube inside the stump too. Okay, so they're not lubed insanely. Because this has multiple layouts, or well, it doesn't have multiple layouts, I should say this PCB is used for multiple variants. I think the extra holes that I'm seeing are for different switch layouts. 
because this one even appears to have a stepped or a split space but I don't see holes for screw and stabilizer so well that's kind of a shame but I've I've usually especially since we're dealing with the FR4 plate usually with some of the um, the thicker plates the more sturdy plates it's not hard to get these to work well they don't seem to be extremely loose they're well attached to the plate so it shouldn't be a big deal let me see we got six screws holding this together I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see what we got in here All right, so we got three long screws for the back and three short screws from the front. I'll flip this back over. Take off the top. So we do have a really nice finish. It feels a little rough, but there is no Mars or Mark that I could see. Except for the grease from my fingers, it all looks good. Now, there is no force break on here, so I'm going to be curious. We're going to be going with a um, stock sound test here today, so we'll see how it sounds. So, this does seem to... All right, we do have a PE layer. We have a daughter board cable. It's going into here, and we have, I don't know if this is EVA, it's a pretty light foam, but we do have foam between the plate and the PCB, so this sits a little weird in here, but let me see if I can get it. All right, the foam is kind of trying to push the... Uh, Got these very tiny gasket socks that keep wanting to come loose. So it's not really fit in here that good. That foam seems to be impeding. I bet it'll impede the flex too, even though there's some flex cuts in the uh, FR4 plate. Hmm. Now we do have IXPE, and there does actually, yep, there is a, um, there is a PET layer not only below the PCB, but below the IPXE, and you can see the plastic over the LED, so we should have a nice poppy sound. I'm just kind of surprised that there is no force break. Uh, I'm curious to see if we'll need to come back and do it. Let's make sure we can go ahead and close this back up. All right, everything seems to fit. And there is flex, it's not crazy, but it's there. Um, it's a little stiffer because of the FR4 plate, but it's definitely a gasket mount. But you saw those gaskets, they were just little tiny socks. I'd prefer them to be a bit bigger. I think they've designed gaskets much better nowadays. All right, so the long ones are for the back. All right. It's a pretty easy assembly and disassembly. That foam just plays a little bit funny. I'd probably want to do something different when I come back to this Tomata, but today we're just going to stick to a stock build. So today we're going to be taking a look at the CK or the Canon Keys and Haimu pastel thistle tactile switch this was sent over to me by canon keys at a discount in exchange for my honest review this is a tactile switch that comes with a palm stem a pa nylon top a palm upe bottom housing and a two-stage 63 and a half gram spring they're nice and poppy the bottom out is not harsh at all it is not the loudest tactile but it's also not silent by any means and it does have a long pull stem 
So let's go ahead and load these up onto the Sugar 65, and then we'll go on to the keycaps. Just one thing that I noticed, uh, I don't know if this is the first set of switches I've had from HiMu because I'm sure that they do other switches in collaboration. But if you guys know, usually you've got one pin that's a little bit weaker than the other. Um, there was quite a few that not only were bent pretty well out of shape, but when I would put them in, this thinner one is usually made of two pieces. I'm not going to take it apart, but it was literally like stripping. Half of the leg was coming off. Um, I think it's, they should be okay, um, but I did have to bend quite a few legs, more so than I'm used to um, with switches, into place. So let's just hope that the rest of the experience is good. Another thing, uh, I noticed this and it threw me off for a second. I was like, oh no, what did I do? The space bar is north facing. I, I, I don't know why, but like I said, the PCB seems to have um, holes for some extra layouts. I know it has an ISO. It's not a full ISO from what everybody says. It's still missing a key, um, but it actually seems to have um, a split shift and a split split backspace but there are no hot top sockets in there so um, I do know some folks that converted their tester 68 to ISOs I don't know if that would be a possibility in these but I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't all right so now that we've got these pastel switches in let's go with the keycap set I Decided to go with a set. These are, I want to say they're either Mint Caps or Young Kui. They are ABS double shot. They have been used for a while. That's why you'll see that they're shiny. But I actually like how they sound. Um, so yeah, they're double shot ABS. I, I want to say they're Mint Caps. But I can't recall for sure. But these I have definitely used for some time. You can see, you can kind of see the shine on them. It's not horrible, but they're definitely worn in. Um, but I kind of like them. I got a place in, in, in my heart and I haven't used these in a while. And since I'm, I thought I had gotten a white one, but this is actually the silver one. Um, I think the white one was a couple dollars more and I was just trying to see how cheap I could get it for. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up with uh, this double shot set of, um, I think it's Apollo colorway uh, with um, double shot ABS keycaps. So let's go ahead and load these up and then we can get to the rest of the, the sound test. And here we are with the Sugar 65 loaded up with the Canon Keys Hyman Pastel and a very worn in set of Apollo ABS double shot keycaps. I, this is, um, I'm cycling through keycaps, trying to um, use some that I haven't used because they just got packed up and forgotten about. And as well as reuse some that, or get to some that I haven't um, used in a while. This is actually one of uh, my first or second batches of keycaps that I bought at AliExpress. At one point I, I was just like, all right, one, two, three, I like how they sound. Yes, they, they wear away, but I mean, this, like I said, this is keycap sets that's probably going close to three years old now, if not right around there. And I had this loaded up on not only one, but I think three of my daily drivers. I just kept taking the keycap set with me on purpose. I wanted to just break one in, but the shine doesn't actually bother me that much. Um, and I just kind of like them. I've always liked how they sound, and I've got to say, I like how this keyboard is sounding. I'm honestly surprised that... That without a force break mod, there's, there's no ping to speak of. Um, and these switches, despite the issues I had with the legs, thankfully... I think they're all okay. Oh, let's go ahead and check out the RGB. And these 
uh, high move pastel thistle are some really actually nice uh, tactiles. They they're just enough for people that don't like a super heavy. I like a super heavy, but I like mediums as well. Um, but they have a nice deeper tone to them. So yeah, with these um, thistle switches and these cherry ABS keycaps, I've actually got a nice deep tone. I'm surprised, honestly, that there is no ping to speak of without a force break mod. I'm just used to having the force break mod, but just to um, remind you guys, Waycab, the manufacturer of this keyboard, also did the uh, WK870 from Keep Monkey. These do actually seem to have side cutouts uh, like the, uh, well, I know it is the Warmier SK71 uh, for side LEDs, though I did not see any there. Speaking of LEDs, let's see what these look like. Oh, they they come on immediately. So it looks we looks like we have some nice LEDs. Yeah, there's no LED here, but there are LEDs underneath the space bar um, foam. That's actually interesting. So that north facing one just kind of had me off a little bit, but that's um it's an interesting decision. But I'm telling you, the PET mod, yes, it does have a bit of a uniformity to it. I don't think it makes all keyboards sound the same, but it makes such a difference. And it takes a keyboard that might just sound okay to, wow, that's very decent. Yes, it could sound a little better probably. And I will come back to it to mod it. But I've got to say, this is a uh, this is an impressive little kit, especially if you can get it. You should get it under $60. That's what I've seen the rough range. Like I said, I was lucky to find it on a super deal for $49. There was only like two choices, and that's why I think I got it in silver, but I wanted it in white. Um, it was silver and brown that were available, and I was like, yeah, I don't really have much that goes with brown. So I picked this one. But um, right now I've seen them as high as $80 during the 11.11 sale, and I just don't know what they're thinking because, uh, I mean, it should, $50, $60, this is an amazing 65% kit. Um, it's, you're definitely getting your money's worth. Um, yes, it's not custom, it doesn't have weight. Um, it's closed source software, which I'll have to take a look at, and I will when I come back to it to mod it. Um, and I'll have, have had a chance to play with it to see what complaints I'll have about it. But otherwise, it's... It's a solid little keyboard that's going to sound great. Load up a decent set of switches that are lubed, and I think you're good to go. I mean, it not having the force break, I'd be curious to know, and maybe when I come back to it, I'll try to find out if putting unlubed switches was going to make this thing ring. But with the way that the core is sandwiched, I, I really don't think so. I think that this is one of those keyboards that you could throw practically any set of switches on it and it may not sound amazing but it's going to sound decent um, for having that combination the ip or ixpe pad on top of the pet um, so i'm 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 going to be performing the pet i'm getting several different types of plastic pe pet ldpe and i'm going to be doing comparisons and mods with those but i think that honestly the that the pet mod offers more for your work than a tempest tape mod i know that might be a little um, sacrilegious there but i i have now combine combining the two makes for a, a difference but i think that the pet mod with the pet and the pe foam or i x p e makes more of a difference in the sound profile and it's going to take it towards a more I don't want to say specific, but a more preferable tone or more pleasant tone than the Tempest Tape mod. And I, I think it's it's the new mod to do. That's why I've been applying it on gasket mount, on, on 
regular tray mounts and I'm getting very good effect. I have yet to go, eh, it didn't really do much for this keyboard. Every keyboard I've applied it to, it has improved the sound significantly. It's taken keyboards that I probably never would have messed with again, that I had already done the Tempest tape mod, applied the pet mod and oh, okay, that's different. So, um, and I am working, I've been doing all my work on different ones and I plan to do a compilation video as one of the PET and the LDPE and the different types of plastic. Anyway, with this one, the WACAV Sugar 65 that everyone's been asking me, hey, when are you going to take a look at it? I'm glad that I finally got it. Like I said, for the price, $50, $60, $65, Sugar 65, I think it is a good value. And like I said, I'm going to use it. I'm going to play with the software. I'm going to come back to it and um, change out some switches, do some mods to it. Um, probably do something different at the bottom with that odd EVA open cell foam that it has and see if we can go even deeper with it. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Wacab Sugar 65 with the thistle, the pastel thistle switches from Canon Keys and Haimu. Uh, tactiles with a 63 and a half gram spring uh, they're a poppy tactile switch that I like how they sound they, they definitely have a, a deeper tone they're not clacky um, I think they're more on the thonky side of things so if you guys have any questions or anything that you want me to check when I open it back up and do some mods um, make sure to Put them down in the comments below i do my best to answer as many comments as possible and i random actually i think i answer all of them at least the ones that that, that i can make sense of sometimes i'm not sure but most of the time i'm able to help you guys out and i'm i'm glad to do that anyway i'm gonna leave you with the stock sound test of the sugar 65 and silver wired and until the next transmission keep calm and Keyboard on.